Hi, and welcome to another HitFilm tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this shake transition effect in the free version of HitFilm, HitFilm Express. Today's video tutorial is rated 3 stars out of 5 on the difficulty scale, because it's not super complicated and there's only one effect, but we will dive into keyframing and advanced interpolation. Before we begin this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Shiny Films, if you want more HitFilm videos and video editing tutorials like this one, and follow me on Twitter at Shiny underscore Films if you want more constant updates that I can give here on YouTube. So let's start off this tutorial. I've got two clips here. I've got one clip here which is 11 seconds long, and this other 4 second clip. I want to transition from the first one into the second one. And because this one's longer, I'm just really quickly just going to create a composite shot out of this clip. This is where we can do keyframing and layer videos on top of one another and it's just going to be a whole ton more useful. So just right click and hit make composite shot and just leave all the settings the same, just hit OK. Now that we're in our own comp shot, we can drag the second video clip on top of the first one. You'll notice now it's at the start and we're just going to drag it all the way to the end so that it becomes the second clip we see. I'm also just going to shorten this first clip and it'll snap into place right there so that they blend together really well. And the last thing I'm going to do before we start applying our shake is to just create a new grade layer. Just hit new layer here and then hit grade. And a grade layer is basically like an adjustment layer if you use Adobe software. It's basically something that'll affect all the layers below it. And that way we don't have to apply the effects to both clips individually. We can just apply it to this one grade layer. Alright, so now it's time for the interesting bit. Go into the effects panel and search up for the shake effect. Yes, HitFilm has a built-in shake effect and it works really well actually. So once you've got it on your clip, just go into the controls and open it up. If you've never used the shake effect before, well this is what it looks like. You'll notice it's add this, this kind of computer generated looking shake to our footage. It's not bad, but there's a couple of things that we need to do to make this into a transition. So the first thing I'm going to do just to make the effect look better, I'll smooth it out. And to show you what it does, if I just increase the amount, and that way it moves a lot more, you'll notice it's really like just the computer moving the camera into different positions, and it looks quite computer generated. And so to fix this, if you just ramp up the smooth to 100, it no longer goes straight from one thing to another, it kind of smooths it all out, and it looks much more natural. You can also increase the speed. If we decrease the speed, I'll show you what it looks like. It goes really slowly from one point to the other and it looks really unnatural. But if you've got uh, really high speeds, like say for example 6, it can look super unnatural as well because it just goes so fast. So I think for our transition, 1.5 is going to do it really fine. The seed here is a randomized number which determines the values of the shake, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So, the first thing to create our transition. You'll notice that the point here in the video where the uh, two clips meet is 7 seconds and 5 frames in, so roughly 1 second before that, you can type it in if you like, or just you know use the playhead, it doesn't have to be exact, but if you go 1 second before, then we're going to start keyframing the shake effect. So what you can do is open up the effect down here, and under the amount, just hit the circle next to amount, and it'll create a new keyframe for you there. And this is how we start to animate our clips. If we just drag the value all the way down to zero again, we're going to go now to the end clip here, to the end of the clip here, sorry. And we can use the comma and the full stop keys to go forward and backwards frame by frame, which is actually really helpful. Now I'm going to increase the amount of shake to something like 500, which is actually quite a lot. If we play it back now, you'll notice it goes from zero all the way to 500, and it slowly begins this shake. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go now to that original frame and then go one second later as well. And I'm going to set the keyframe back to zero. So it looks like this so far. It looks okay, but it really doesn't look very cool. And so there's a couple of things we're going to do to make this look a lot nicer. Just before we do those things to make it look nicer, we're just I'm just going to show you that if you want to, you can also just shake it on a certain axis if you want. So if you go to individual controls, if we just say turn down Y shake and tilt shake all the way, you'll notice that now it only shakes left and right, which if you're going for that kind of effect, can be pretty cool as well. But I'm just going to set everything back to one so we have our normal shake again. 
Okay, so now we've got a basic shake going on, but it doesn't look super good. And so what I'm going to do is adjust the interpolation between these keyframes here. If you're talking about maths and science and stuff, interpolation is generally when you're trying to guess a value between two points of data that you've got. In HitFilm, we can adjust the interpolation manually, meaning that we can adjust the way that the value changes between the two keyframes. To show you what I mean, let's just open the value graph by just clicking on it over here. I'm also going to zoom into the timeline scale a little bit so we can see our graph a little nicer. I'm just going to scroll over here. Okay, at the moment you can see that it goes straight from zero all the way just straight up to 500 and straight back down to zero. But we're going to change this to make it a little bit smoother. So just highlight all of these keyframes just by dragging a mark here around. And if we see here, we've got tons of different uh, interpolation types. We've got constant, which you know creates it just straight to the next value. And we've got all kinds of smooth ones like so. Whatever you want to do, if you just hit manual Bezier, then you work out the best because we've got these these arms here. I forgot what they're actually called, but these arms, these handles uh, that we're going to be able to use to manually change the interpolation. So if I just hit on one and drag it down, like so, I'm going to get the other one and drag it into the same place. What we've got now is a really smooth looking transition because it slowly builds up and then it goes away at this point here. And I mean, it looks okay now, but it'll look even better when we do our next step. So let's get into that next step. Get out of the value graph because it's easier. And now we're going to make it look less like one shake and make it look like a whole shake transition. So to do that, we're going to select the effect and just hit Control D on our keyboard and that'll duplicate it. On your, if you're on a Mac, you can use Command D, but Windows Control D. You'll notice now that uh, at the moment here, it just looks like we've got an accentuated shake. It just looks like a stronger shake. But what we can do is actually change the seed. The seed, as I mentioned earlier, is like this random value and it determines the position and all the different transform values of the shake. So if we just go to a random seed, just drag on the value and get a random number, then it'll create another shake. And now we've got two separate shakes working in tandem side by side at the same time. So we're going to repeat this effect for a couple of times more. I'm going to create, say, four shake effects. I'm going to select the shake effect, Control D, then I'm going to change the seed, and then again, select the effect, Control D, and change the seed. And then we can see that we've got a really nice four shake effects, and that actually looks really cool. There are two main reasons why I used four shake effects. The first one is because naturally the shake effect looks pretty unnatural just with one shake effect. And then the second reason is that each shake effect, when you're in a comp shot, adds its own motion blur. And this is really good because when you have four shake effects together, when the shake effect becomes like really big, it'll add an absolute ton of motion blur, as you can see in frames like this. And this is all four instances of motion blur put together and it looks like a really natural uh, actual blur. So there's our natural looking shake effect. Of course, you can also adjust, you know, the amount, make it less, make it more, depending on what kind of shake effect you want. And you can change the speed as well to create a different speed. Also, you might notice that with your shake effect, it might be going in a certain direction that you don't want. For example, as you can see in this shake effect, with all the shake effects combined, it kind of pans right. And if you want to, you can just change each seed individually until you have a really nice blend of shake effect. So that's a pretty cool shake effect, and it looks pretty natural and pretty nice already. But there's a couple of things that we can do if we want to make it look just a little bit nicer. So there are two main effects that we can apply here. A first is a blur, because we've got already got this motion blur, but if you want to, we can apply an extra blur. I'm just going to go into the effects panel. You can use lens blur if you want for a more realistic effect, but it takes a lot of time to render, so I'm just going to use the normal blur. I'll open up the shake effect and go to that initial keyframe. Here I'll set a keyframe for the blur radius to be something pretty gentle, I don't want it to be too harsh. Something like 15 maybe. Now I'm going to go to these keyframes. You can tell that the, there's a keyframe at the frame when a little circle appears inside this circle here. And I'm just going to uh, drag the radius all the way down. And the same here. And I'm just going to highlight these keyframes and quickly just adjust the interpolation in a similar way. And now we've got a little bit of a nicer blur going on here as well. 
The second effect we're going to add is a little bit of a flash. So to do that, we're going to not add brightness or contrast, but something that I really like in this kind of instance is to add just a simple glow effect. Just drag it on after or before your blur, it's up to you. And what you can do is adjust the threshold and all of the different settings to get a really nice glow that you like. So go into the controls, I'm going to open up the glow here. If you notice the threshold is the amount of stuff that's glowing. If you set it at 0%, everything's glowing and it just doesn't look right. So, so I'm going to set it to something like this, which looks really nice because the glow's kind of coming off the grass and the light here, and it's kind of shining really nicely. So I'm going to close out the value graph real quick. At this frame right here, I'm going to set the uh, glow intensity to be zero, and I'm going to set a keyframe for that as well. I'm also going to go to this frame now, and at this frame, I'm going to set a desired intensity to be whatever I like, and I might increase the radius just a little bit. And then at this frame, all the way back here again, I'm going to uh, get rid of that intensity again. And that's just a really nice subtle glow uh, that really adds to the image. You can also adjust the interpolation of the glow effect to make it more like a spike, like in the other ones. But if you do that, then it kind of removes the gentleness of the glow, which I really like. So I'm just going to keep it like it is at the moment. And that's the shake effect transition pretty much done. Of course, feel free to mess around with each of these sliders and each of these effects and add your own effects in with the mix. I hope you enjoyed today's video or found it useful. If you did, then be sure to hit the like button down below. And of course, subscribe to me if you want more hit film editing and video editing tutorials like this one. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.